is fun. <laughs> Next. Okay, so. Okay, <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Although, I'm going to have to refrain from making the iPad joke. <coughs> Which kind of goes along with the IP joke. But anyway. <laughs> I'm sure they got an iPad app for that. <laughs> Menstrual cramps? We have an app for that. Anyway. <laughs> Samsung seeks iPhone ban in Australia and Japan. Or if you read it the way they have it written, it's Australia, Japan. So apparently there is an Australia and Japan. Mm-hmm. South Korea's know. Samsung Electronics says it is trying to block the sale of Apple's newest iPhone in Japan and Australia, escalating its legal battle with the U.S. giant after several setbacks. Samsung said in a statement on Monday, seriously, that's a lot of S's. <laughs> it had filed for preliminary injunctions in courts in Tokyo and New South Wales. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> Seeking a ban on sales of the iPhone 4S on the grounds it infringes Samsung's technology patent. It said it has been it is also seeking a sales ban on the iPhone 4 and iPad 2 in Japan. Apple has continued to violate our patent rights and free ride on our technology. We will no longer stand idly by and will steadfastly protect our intellectual property. I don't know why I read it like that, but it sounded cool. Mm. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. You know how uh, the Blackberries and all that have been haywire in the last few weeks? Mm-hmm. I just thought that was a little bit odd that, you know, it happens after the ex-CEO of Apple cacks it. Yeah. You know, boo. <laughs> Maybe There's he an came app. back. Yeah, there is an app for that. Have you seen some <laughs> of the pictures? Like I saw one where he, where Steve Jobs went to, um, was in heaven. He was standing before the whole, the pearly gates, gates and yep. uh, Saint, whatever his name is. Yeah, that dude. I used to know what Saint, and when I told this joke the other day, I had it, but I, I've lost. It. I think it's like, oh, never mind. I'm not even gonna try. But anyway, Saint, what's his face, is sitting there reading through the book, and then Steve Jobs is holding something that says, "I have an app for that." Exactly. Yes, that's the same <laughs> one I was looking at. Oh, goodness. Saint, let's face it. Huh? Saint, whatever is... Yeah, that one. <laughs> I'm sure they make necklaces. It's all good. Someone will know. They make an app for that, too. Yeah, probably. <laughs> okay, this one... What would you yell for this one? This would be... Ah! <laughs> I'm thinking probably an eight... Rather than just four. Four! No, wait, oh! Ah! (laughs) Okay. Plane crashes at New Zealand golf course from October 17. A light plane has crashed into a golf course near Queenstown with three people believed to be on board. The Cessna nosedived into the Arrowtown golf course on Monday afternoon. Emergency services are at the scene. A police officer told Southland Times that three people have been injured and one of those is believed to be unconscious. The plane broke in half on impact and firefighters are extinguishing the fire. Well, must be taking a long time if we're telling it on Friday. Yes. (laughs) It's a very big fire. (laughs) Hey, the good news is, it was a light plane. Because if it had been a heavy plane, oh... God, could you imagine the divots they'd have to get out of the golf course? Man, the caretaker of that golf field is going to be Here we pissed. Go. Here we go. You couldn't land in the sand trap, could you? Seriously? I wonder if they got a... Hey, it would be a lot easier afterwards to get a hole in one. Yeah. Aim for the big flipping hole that the plane <laughs> left. <laughs> you what? won't get your ball back because it probably melted in the fire. But yeah. hey, exactly. Um, I'm I'm sort of thinking. Um, no, I've lost it. Don't worry about it. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Speaking of losing things. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of stripping. <laughs> 
Why do I get all the one with the S's? Ah, Scrabble Scandal. Strip down and find the G. <laughs> the G is a myth, honey. It's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Says who? <laughs> S- no, never mind. Anyway. <laughs> mm. It's a good thing they weren't also missing the O, because that would just open up way too much. <laughs> just a little bit. <sighs> anyway. A missing G tile led to accusations of cheating and a demand for a Scrabble competitor to be strip searched at a world championship. First of all, problem number one. They have a world championship for Scrabble. Yeah. Okay. It is the biggest scandal to rock the event since a player accused another of eating a tile. Really, really, really. Wouldn't that kind of (laughs) hurt? Ow. I'm trying to think of, of a really, really good joke, but I, I can't. But anyway. <clears throat> oh, God. Huh. <laughs> the Sun is reporting Thai player Cholapat Ithieri insisted the tile mysteriously went missing during the match with England's Ed Martin. He insisted Martin be strip searched. <laughs> Poor English, dude. It's always the Thai people that make the English strip down. Yes. He insisted Martin be strip searched in the toilet. Bad mental image. Anyway, mm, to find the missing okay. G tile. Mm, I wonder if there's going to be a cavity search. <laughs> well, they'll probably find the G if they do that. <laughs> <laughs> the judges ruled in Martin safer. <laughs> Who won the game by just a point because the G mysteriously made a reappearance. (laughs) (laughs) Times reported yesterday, New Zealander Nigel Richards defeated Aussie Andrew Fisher over the Maori Maori word for hat, making him $20,000 richer. His victory speech was short and sweet. Played okay. Nice. (laughs) Okay. What the heck does that have to do with the original story? I have no idea, but I suppose they wanted to have a happy ending without having to have the cavity search. Well, it is Australian news, so I guess they had to throw something about an Aussie in there. And a New Zealander. Mm. Um, ooh, I get to read this one! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Please, read all of it. And let's see if I can get another stampede going. Oop, hang on. There we go. <laughs> um, alrighty. Failed Rapture Prophet Harold Camping. World will end on October 21. From October 18. So the clocks are ticking. Um, home News wi- Weird World. Failed Rapture Prophet Harold Camping. Well, we'll end October 21. Why did I say that twice? By Natalie Evans. Um, yes, I'm not reading the next book because I'm not a complete twat this week. Okay. <laughs> Decrease font size. Increase font size. <laughs> the Christian broadcaster who incorrectly predicted that the world would end in May this year has claimed it will still happen on October 21st. Harold Camping, 90... Maybe he forgot to carry the one. Stated that Judgment Day would take place on May 21st, when Jesus would return to Earth and the righteous would be taken up to Heaven. Despite the fact that May 21st came and went, the American evangelist now claims that this Friday, October 21st, will be the actual apocalypse. Camping, who runs Christian broadcast channel Family Radio, was reportedly flabbergasted when no one was raptured on that date. Seriously? Um, However, he maintained that God accomplished exactly what he wanted to happen, and that a spiritual judgment had occurred to make way for their physical destruction. Gee, that's so cheery. He uh, he also warned for the next five months, except for the elect, the true believers, the whole world is under God's final judgment. The devout believer claims that those five months are now up, and that the world really would end this weekend. The modern-day Nostradamus used numerology to the Bible 
to work out the supposed dates for the rapture. He previously incorrectly predicted that the world would end on May 21st in 1988 and again on September 6, 1994. In the run-up to May 21st this year, Camping recruited dedicated followers, many of who quit their jobs to help spread the word of Judgment Day, posting warnings on 2,000 billboards in the USA. After the most recent failed predictions, Camping and his family fell silent and refused to comment, instead posting an explanation on their website entitled What Happened on May 21st. Camping has also played a l- played less of a role in the family radio business after suffering a stroke in June this year. Yet, despite the numerous inaccurate prophecies, millions of people are still terrified that the end is coming, with uh, with numerous internet forums, websites and social networking pages dedicated to Judgment Day uh, in 2011. Yeah. Round two. Well, I mean, if he guesses enough times... I'm pretty sure he's going to get it right. It's kind of like the John Edwards guy. There's a. It starts with an A, a B, a C, a D, an E. Mm-hmm. So me this year. No, next year. Okay, first of all, number one. Um, obviously, he doesn't pay attention. The world is supposed to end in December of 2012. Duh. Yeah. Number two, he uses numerology. Okay. Do I even have to begin pointing out the error of that. One in one is three. Two in two is five. <laughs> <laughs> you do math like me. Yay. <laughs> no, numerology, I mean, I heard that numerology has been around for a really long time, but numerology now has kind of gone into a more spiritual thing, and, you know, so it's just kind of funny that this guy who looks like he's on crack and he's really creepy looking, like he really is, um, is using numerology. And then on top of that, he calls himself a true believer. Okay, it says, plain and simple, in the Bible, that no one will know when the day comes. And who's, there, not, that to means, s- who's not to say that the rapture is individual for every person? Mm-hmm. You know... It may be, okay, my grandfather died on this such and date. That's his rapture. That's it. You know, see, he... the thing is, uh-huh. again, because in the Bible it says, no one will know, why would there be clues left behind? I mean, God is supposed to be this all-knowing, all-seeing. Wouldn't he know that if he left clues laying around, someone could figure out, no one will know. It's on a Tuesday. Oh, crap. No, it can't be on a Friday. It, it can be on a Sunday. I'm happy with a Sunday, but not on a Friday. We need our show. <laughs> yes. Just got to get you that You all in there. need us. Yes.